Does your machine do this? Stay tuned guys, we're gonna go through that, this machine together and I'm gonna show you guys uh, basic tune-up operation. So we're gonna do a full tune-up on it, but I'm also gonna help you guys correct that problem. And we'll talk a little bit about it at the end and throughout the video as to what's really causing this. And, and you're just gonna need a few basic hand tools. We're gonna take the carburetor apart, uh, but it's real simple on one of these new machines. I'll see you in a minute. It's nice out. It is nice, a little windy. All right, so go away, fly. But first thing, there's fuel in it. And we're gonna clean this thing up a little bit because it does need a tune up and, and it needs to, issues need to be addressed. So let's suck this fuel. Now I can tell just by the color of it. We'll come back a little later, but that's that's got water in it. But the first problem is we have water in it, and that might be your problem. Now we gotta get it out. Uh, so we'll let that settle, we'll come back a little later. Now these, I think this is 5 16 there's only three bolts. Nice thing about these newer motors, one of the nice things, it's easy to maintain, you need to get this clean, keep it clean. If yours is dirty, clean it, it's probably why you're having a problem. We'll talk more about the water a little later. Let's get these bolts out of here. They're air-cooled, but not just air-cooled, it's the way the air flows around all of this. And it's important to keep it clean. Now again, this one's not bad, but while it's here and we're gonna service it, we'll put these bolts back, just the three. This is an automatic choke version, but yours may be push uh, to prime. We're just gonna lift that up and just lean it back out of the way. This way you can get in here. I'm gonna use the pressure washer, but we're not gonna use a lot of pressure. This could just be done with some super clean and hose. Now let's turn it. I may wanna take the blade off for sharpening and just to get in there. Let's see. Yeah, she looks real good. Yeah, we could, that blade's a little dull. So I'm gonna take this off, I'll be back in a minute. All right, we gotta get the carburetor off. So we're gonna leave the fuel thing attached. This is easy, we're just gonna, there's two different size bolts, the two different types of bolts. And uh, so the outer bolt actually is going into a threaded area. And again, I wanna show you from behind. I think it's like 5 16 eight millimeter. All right, that will work. The inner ones are going into the plastic of the carburetor. I don't know, I got a socket here that's like 9 30 seconds. That's what works here. Probably also some, other, I don't know, I, I really don't care, metric. Um, it, it doesn't matter because people ask me, one guy asked me recently, well, what size Torx did you use to get there? Who cares? Really, you should have a tool set. It, well, you can go out and buy one tool and that's it. Get some cheap proto something tool set for this kind of stuff. You'll be happy because you're gonna come across something with another size, maybe you wanna do something else and I don't know, maybe that's a different size, I don't know. Let me just give you a sneak peek back here before we take it off because I wanna show you how the rods go. Uh, so let's go do that now. All right, so this is coming from <clears throat> it's automatic choke. So that's your choke stove. It gets hot. The spring metal in there expands and contracts with heat and cooling. Connects over here. It's really simple. To the top one. All right, there's your choke blade. Right. This just connect this here, right? That's your vent from your crankcase. And then the throttle is the lower one. Well, I'll just pull all the bolts out, <clears throat> get them out of your way. Now, I don't use zip guns for this stuff. You'll strip stuff out. So the silver ones are the smaller ones. And that's what's holding this whole plastic thing, uh, the carburetor to this plastic housing. And now these, this, these are the ones with the steel threads, right? The fine threads. And these, are, these are like plastic wood type screws. Hopefully you could see that. And there's a lot of light on it, I know. All right, so let's grab it. We're gonna pull it straight towards us. And we're just gonna go pop a little bit. Okay, pull. Now, if you want, right, you can take, you can take that off, but I don't, I just, I just turn it like that. 
Now this is this is clean. This is actually clean. This one is clean. For the uh, usually they're not. That's why I take them off. But I think we're going to take this one off anyway because there could be a little bit of a junk down the bottom. There is a filter in here. So what we'll do is we'll bring it over to the table and we're going to get a good look inside. We're going to clean everything up. These are pretty good carburetors. So I know they're plastic and all, but they deal with the alcohol and the gas. All right, let's take this can off. I'm gonna use some of my release compound. A lot of people ask me about this. It's transmission fluid and gasoline. And it works really well for so many things. And I often explain what it is in my other videos. Now, yes, there's a bit of water in there, which could have came from us washing it, but so what I wanna do, yeah, but it, she's got water in there, right? Because there was water in the gas. So what I want to do is I'm going to go and blow this out. Um, it doesn't appear to be dirty. Blow it out. I'll take a little bit of fresh fuel, plug the end, shake it around, dump that out, okay, and then blow it out again. Uh, and then I'm going to leave it in the sun, open, because it's hot, it's hot, sunny today. That should burn, because it's black, it's going to get hot. And that should burn off any excess water or gasoline in there. You see? It's, yeah. All right, let me go do that. All right, I blew it out. Now, I use an air compressor. I would recommend getting one, even a small one, even something like an air nailer. Very useful. You can use, like, that canned air, right, for computers. It's just not going to be enough power. You really need something with a bit more power. Um, I'm going to use a bit of gasoline here. You can also use alcohol, denatured alcohol, just a little bit. I put a little splash in this little 10-ounce cup and just pour that in there. And I'm going to shake it around, All right? It's going to build up some pressure. And you got to blow your cap, too, and, and make sure your cap is clean because if there's any dirt in there, that'll just recontaminate it. Okay. Now, let's, with the pressure, let's take the plug off the end. Yeah, see? And that's, that's all mixed in there. There's a little bit of dirt, like micro. It's clean, especially after blowing it out. All right now is when we got to blow it out because that it's trapped in there. But a lot less water. I'm back about 10 minutes later, maybe a little bit more. And I told you I took the container off the top. And you see the glass is clearing up up here. But what's actually happening is whatever, because when gasoline gets warm, right, the vapor pressure goes up in a sealed container, you're creating pressure. You know, you guys, I'm sure you guys must have opened up a container of gas and it goes, pss, right? So it's displacing some of the air that's in there. And some of that air is mixed with water vapor and some of it's mixed with volatile gasoline fumes. That's why you should always be careful with it. What's happening here is it's clouding up and some of that water is held in suspension by pressure. Um, and so when you release the pressure, it begins to dis the water begins to disassociate from the gasoline. I didn't stir it, I didn't move it, I didn't do anything like that. That column is still sitting down there that had originally settled, but now it's in suspension. So we gotta leave this open a little bit longer. You still see some bubbles. Look, there's one dripping right there. I don't know if it's gonna zoom in on it. Yeah, we gotta leave it be for a little while. That's how much water has been infused into the uh, gasoline. So we gotta leave it for a little bit. And I always put these things on the side. This is out while I'm working here, um, getting kind of clean up the shop and doing a few other things, keeping an eye on it. And then I wanna close it again and I'll probably put it up on the shelf, right? Just take it like this, move it off my table, put it in a safe location. You can smell it. I can actually smell it. It's and because it's warm in here. It's starting to warm up now. This works the best in the summertime, this whole thing. That'll clear up in a little while and it'll be usable gas and I'll suck just the gas out and I'll leave the junk in the bottom. I mean, this stuff is like liquid gold. It's really expensive now. It's like, it reminds me, things are getting, are gonna be so getting like so bad, like we'll be back to, you know, some of those movies in the 80s, you know? And I like the, the precious juice, right? 
Those are good movies. What was that movie? What was the name of that movie? I forget the name of the movie. You guys know what I'm talking about. But what's his name? And the leather outfit. What the heck was movie was that? All right, I'll be back. I got to get the name of that movie. I'm going to use a little bit about what you know what we dumped out, plus some of this gas that's still sitting. It's clearing up slowly. I can't really tilt it, but. Right, I'm just going to wipe down the outside. I don't want the, anything from the outside to get, you know, contaminate to the inside. Okay, so now, once again, this is basically the same size as those other silver ones. It, this only goes on in one direction, so I'm not concerned, you know, when we're taking it apart. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get there. All right, now, I'm going to pull it apart. And usually they don't come right off because they're kind of jammed on. We'll grab a little screwdriver. And there's a couple of good pry points in here. Ah, here's one. All right, so underneath this, just just underneath it. Okay. I'm gonna be careful about where you pry. See now there's junk all around this seam here. All right, where that gasket is. O-ring. Gonna clean that. Okay, <clears throat> now this pin comes out. Now it can pop out, but I don't recommend that. The plastic gets beat and you could damage it. So we can get it out by sliding it. Okay. That looks good. There's our needle. And I'm just gonna wipe it with my fingers. I felt a little dirt on it. We'll blow it. Uh, you don't want to, this little rubber tip on here will come shooting off. Everything we blow, we blow with a compressor, we blow with low pressure air, 20, 30 pounds, and at a little bit of a distance. Now, I have seen people stick screwdrivers in here and try to pry up. And that's a no no, it's plastic. Um, and you could damage the o-ring and you can deform the plastic this won't seal and then you'll be like well piece of crap go right no just grab it with a pair of pliers this is a nice safe place don't crush down on it just grab it snug All right hold it now usually what I do is I'm just gonna put it down okay so it lays flat and I'm just gonna give it a pull that's it comes right out all right we're gonna clean that, that's our whole jet manifold. All right, she looks good, she's just dirty. A little bit of gum out, all right? Here's our O-ring, here's our other O-ring. Put that to the side, I'll show you where that goes in a little bit. Here's an O-ring here if you want, you can take that out, but usually they stay in there, but we're gonna blow with the air and we're gonna use a little bit of gum out, so we wanna take that out, because these things can be damaged, just like and here too, we can you know, you can damage that with with gum out, but we're gonna go quick with that. All right, so now we're just gonna blow the outside a little and into this port here. This is the choke side, and there's a port down in here. You'll see it. All right, a little bit in the uh, intake for the fuel. Let's turn it upside down. Well, before we turn it upside down, we'll get a little bit through here. This is the throttle side. Just clearing it. Now we'll turn her upside down. And there's usually a little port here. So this is the intake side. There's a little port here that gets clogged. And then there's one here and a third one, right? Because you'll see the manifold in a minute. Now. And then there's this little baffle, a little aluminum baffle, you'll see it. See a little aluminum baffle right there? Get underneath it with the hose. This looks clean. All right, now, let me blow it. I always blow away from the table. She looks good. Now I want to show you one thing. That port. See the ports? You should be able to see something in there. The port closest to my thumb. Uh, it's, I've seen it where that port, really any of them, but that port in particular, uh, can become, get jammed up, with, gooled up with junk. Now this car is fairly clean. If yours is an older model, 
then you may have junk in there. This is an acid brush. I cut the bristles down and make them a bit more stiff. And I'll go in like this into these areas here and wipe back and forth and twist. I didn't need to do that, but I just wanted to show you. I always have something like that laying around. Let me blow it. All right, so we're clean in here, right? That's it. This is this part is done. And then we got this guy. Now this O-ring, there is dirt all around here. And that's where our brush and a little bit of solvent uh, comes in handy. I still see a bit of water residue as I'm blowing uh, because that gum out is kind of trying to mix a little bit with the water and lift it up. <clears throat> you know, there was water, there's definitely water in here. Now we're gonna come in here. Now, another place to put, <clears throat> grab the gum out container. All up and around this area here, this, uh, some of them actually have a bleed screw where you can actually bleed it, but this one doesn't have, it's a drain. We wanna make sure we kind of flood this area a bit. There's a little piece of something that came out. The stuff gets stuck. And this is another spot where, you know, you can come in with this little brush like this and do your business. This one's not too bad. This, this was, this is water, water infiltration. Let me go blow this. Once again, I can see water residue as I'm blowing it. It almost makes it look like an oil because it's, it's weird. It's behaving weird. Let me get a paper towel. It's one of our blue towels. And again, just make sure there is nothing left in there. Gasket looks good. Let's put that to the side. All right, now lastly, now they do sell this, you can replace this. I've had pretty good luck with cleaning these. If you hold it up to the light, you may see something inside. If you've got a lot of debris in there, and it's really inhaled a lot of debris, then that's a case when you're gonna to wanna to replace it. But try getting it out first. Now we can leave the O-rings on there. We're gonna be quick about it. We're gonna blow in through these jets. That's why we're not gonna be soaking anything. There's a jet here. That should do it. Let me blow it with the air. All right, that's it. Now let's put this thing back together. I'll be right back. Let me just put this away and we'll get ready for an assembly. Okay, we got our stuff ready here. We're ready to put everything back together again. So to aid in our efforts, I'm just gonna put a little bit of, you can use two stroke, but this is my tranny mix. Like I said, I use this for so many things. You think about it, this is a little older tranny fluid because I had a transmission problem in one of the vehicles I was working on and I had to keep dropping it and putting it back in. I, you know, I use new, but it always mixes with a little bit of the old. Uh, I also buy tranny fluid because I've got the hydraulics on the tractor, etc. You think about what's inside a transmission, the valve body and everything is highly machined, polished metal that would rust if it ever saw anything that isn't oil. And oil. And then of course you got all these O-rings, right, everywhere. And so it's got rust, anti-rust agents in it. It's got things to keep the O-rings pliable, but not swell them up. So there's just a lot of benefits to it. it it's, a, it's a very high quality oil. Now this only goes in in one direction and it looks like it'll snap in that way. If you try to put it the other way, notice, see how high up it is, All right, You'll never get it in. So turn around the other way and then just press with your thumbs. I heard it snap. And with the extra little bit of lubricant, it just made our lives so much easier. But normally I take that spring off before I pressure wash because it can go boing out in the yard and I'll never find it again, even though I have extras. Now we'll put in this guy and again, same thing. And just make sure your fingers are clean. We'll hang it. And we're going to drop it in. We're gonna slide this guy in a little bit at a time. I don't wanna force it, okay? Like I said, it looks like it would snap in and it probably would, but I don't, it's plastic, right? How many times can you do that? I've had it a lot of times where these are stripped out. Don't use any kind of tool for that. Now, this, this top will only go in one direction. We've gotta line it up. We're not gonna force it. We don't wanna pull it in with the screws because that could cock it. 
And so that little recess that's in there, right, that's gonna generally go over this piece here. And we'll know in a minute, yeah, see? We'll kind of line up the holes as best you can and just, oh, I heard it. Hear it? That's it, it's in. Okay, now you know, right, you're not forcing anything. And then when we go to put the screws in by hand, she'll bite. Now you can, if this strips out on you, I want to show you, let me just snug this one up. Let me go get something to show you. Uh, you could put a tie wrap in, like a bread tie, or um, a small tie wrap. I don't have one handy. Handy! Uh, but it would be a small tie wrap. I keep a few things laying around. Like these are different types of ties. I also have some bread ties. You can slip it in there, right? cut it uh don't cut it off yet start your screw get your screw going then before you bottom the screw out then cut the excess off um this is a tie wrap similar to i think they i think they make one even smaller than this and you can get that in there as well because there's a bottom to this one so you can kind of put that in there like i said i think they make a small yeah they make a smaller one than this Depends upon how bad yours is. Uh, and I've seen this sometimes because guys use these zip guns, right, on everything. You want to develop, if you're new at things, you want to develop a way of doing things with your hands, right? So you can feel the forces involved. Get good with your hands articulating, making those brain connections. When I first started auto mechanics, and one of the things I migrated to pretty early on with custom cars and such is custom fuel lines and fuel systems. Um, and they are, we'll put this O-ring back. Um, actually, you know what we'll do is we'll put it on. I'll show you. We're going to put it on the tube. And they were made of brass. And trying to, when you have a brass fitting that's uh, sealed through the threads, it's an MPT, you have to tighten it. Just like in plumbing, but that's usually steel. You have to tighten it, but you, you don't want to over-tighten it. You over-tighten it, they break. They snap. And I broke so many. So, you know what happens. Let's go bring it over to the uh, engine. But before we do that, I got a piece of fuel line here, a tube. And let's see if this fits. Yeah, that kind of fits on there. Now, this is its normal position. I'm going to blow in, and you'll hear air go through the float. Now, I'm going to flip it upside down. No air. Okay. So, at the very least, simple test. Um, the float is sealing, All right? Okay, let's bring this over and get this thing on. All right, it's time to put it on. You see here, you got this, this white thing. What is that, Arch? Well, that's a retainer. So what we want to do is we want to put that O-ring back in, the black O-ring, and what it does, push it down all the way, there's a stop. Then this retainer, now, just a little bit of something on it, just wipe it off. And so this retainer, this has got like a notch in it here. The notch goes out. And I'm not sure what that notch really for because once it's in it rotates around it just snaps in but it actually rotates I'm not really sure where that notch would go I don't think it has any real bearing there's a little bit of dirt on the intake tube I'm going to use our favorite stuff let's just give that a quick blow now this is the top one and this is the bottom So that's our face, our choke, our fuel, and it goes in like this, all right? So this is the choke rod, uh, excuse me, the throttle rod, all right? And then you'll have to kind of finagle with it. There's a bit of play in all of this, so, all right, and give it a push. That's it. 
it's on. Now, let me go grab the tank. It's actually easier to put the tank on now before we put the cover on, on account of that cover is gonna block our view a little bit. So I'll go get the tank, it's been outside, it should be dry, bring it in, we'll connect it, and then uh, and we'll put the face on. Now you can use the two trunk or whatever, but we're gonna use our tranny fluid stuff. And that'll help us to slip it on. Make sure it's back all the way. And we're gonna reach, just reach in there. Lift up. Slide it in until it goes all the way down. Here's our bolts, by the way. Just take those off because we're gonna get ready to put the top on in a minute. I'll show you what I want to do there. Now we have, if we get to put the tube right, that's that transfer tube for the crankcase vent. Now to get everything lined up, I'm just going to finger start them up, you know, drive them in a little bit, don't cinch them down or anything. There's a little bit of flexibility there. Once you get them in, We're going to tighten down the one on the carburetor first. And then we'll tighten down the outer ones, which are mounting it to that bracket, the steel bracket. Now this is done. Now I've got one more thing to do. Now, especially on the older models, this is kind of part of the tune-up in a way. On the older, older models, and we washed this. Now we're going to put a little bit, of, you can put oil, but I like chain wax. they get kind of goobered up and then it's that spring perch where you can see the spring kind of grabs this bracket here you know bring it up to the top put a little bit of chain wax in that pull it through all the way right that's going good now right still got a little bit of dirt there right they get dirty I'm gonna put this down and you can, the choke generally does not need to be adjusted be careful when you're putting it down. You don't want to hit the choke mechanism. All right? Remember, we got that spring on. So she goes down. All right, let me put the top on. Now, when, before I run it again, I'd like to change the oil uh, as part of that, and I want to kind of hit the blade real fast, right? So I'm going to go do that. Um, the blade's not bad because this is also a tune-up. We got to pull the plug as well. And this blade's pretty good, but it's got a little borkage on the end, so I want to check its balance. We're going to sharpen it. Uh, I'm going to take care of that. I got a nice video on how to clean blades, sharpen, hand sharpen with a file or a grinder. Um, even suggestions on bench grinders, how to clean it, um, how to balance it. So you might want to check out that series as well. Be back in a minute. All right, clean up this blade. And like I mentioned, I have videos on doing that. Um, a little bit of a quick dry. Um, I actually balanced it, sharpened and balanced, and it needed a little bit of material removed here from the heavy end. It's a little tacky, it's still hot, I had it out in the sun drying. You want to make sure that the mounting surface is clean, of course, on the blade and here, and that there's no damage to any of the, the mounting points, that the locating points. This is like brand new, but if yours is getting older or somebody had it before you and it was damaged, you might want to take a look at those videos because that will cause the blade to be out of balance and you'll have all kinds of issues and you can beat up your motor. Now, they also sell, um, it's like a, a bolt-on type bracket that holds the uh, blade for you so you can install it and remove it so it doesn't spin. You can just use a block of wood. Um, a lot of times I, I, I'll put a glove on and I'll put my pry bar or breaker bar on it and I'll just hold it. Before you do that, uh, take the plug out or disconnect the wire from the plug just in case, right? Safety first! I me blammo this on and we're going to go to the oil. Alright, now I'm going to show you guys the right way to change the oil on this nice Craftsman lawnmower. As is customary, we just flip it over on, the, on its side. And, oops! Oh, wow! Don't do that. Right, keeping it real, but I figured I would just show you guys how I make a mess. This is, this is how you want to do it. Made a mess, clean it up. 
with Super Clean available at AutoZone. It's, it, this stuff is pretty good. I have another product that I don't like as much. This is more like kitty litter. The other stuff is weird. Uh, but this is like the Dryzol. We used to do what we call the Dryzol dance in Auto Shop, where you stand on top of it and you kind of grind it into the floor. All right. So clean up. Made a mess. But Super Clean's going to help us out. Thanks, Super Clean. All right, cut. All right, clean up assistant. Where are you? Where's my beer assistant, too? Where? She's not here today, Arch. She took a quality of life day. I need some help over here. Can somebody finish cleaning this thing up? Well, I got a nice graduated container for mixing paint. I'm going to start off with about 20 ounces or so. Uh, this is about, okay, this is like 14 ounces. If you overfill it, you're going to cause too much pressure inside the engine and uh and that that'll be a problem you're not going to just be using oil you could damage the motor and then i'm going to check it i'm going to drain down in there a little bit and we'll just put the dipstick in and test it and see where we are she's just about right is the, the holes are right here like these little holes in the line all right give it a bit i'm going to let it settle in and uh you know give you a real number she's right on the money so that's what it took, what was that, 16 ounces? It probably could use like a, a squeeze, squeegee amount more, right? That's fine. Right? Like I said, they don't take a lot. All right, let's turn around the other way. We got. We want to check the, do the plug and we'll put an air filter in it, we'll get some gas in it. Okay, fellas, so the first thing I noticed is the plug is loose. So this is very common, even when you buy these things, whoever puts them together, this says made in America, I don't know what that means anymore of US and global parts, it says on the sticker. Well, the plug looks really good. I'm just gonna clean whatever soot is on there off with the wire wheel, and use a sandblast or anything, and just not using that, I'm just gonna rinse it, a little bit of the gum out, and then we're gonna gap it to 28 thousandths, I'll show you that in a bit, <clears throat> just about 30 thousandths, and we're gonna put a little no seize on this and put it back. It's nice and clean. Now, I, I use a couple of different ones, but this is one of my favorites, the Mac Tool. It was a little tight. It was closer to 25,000, so I'm just going to flex a little bit and get it closer to that 2830. That should do it. And it's nice and clean. Now, when we go to install it, I want to show you a very common scenario. I'm just going to read off the plug. This is a Champion. It's an RC12YC very common plug um, now like I said I want to show you it's got a washer on it did I show you the washer yeah there's a washer on it all right it's a compression style washer when they're new if you want to go get a plug and just have an extra because you could you, know, you could break it putting it in or taking it out or something so you might just want to take it with you go to the store or you can order all this stuff online Okay. Now, the technique is to tighten it. And a lot of people get scared, they feel like it's stripping. You have to compress that gasket. So it's pretty much right about here, it feels tight. And as I move forward, I can actually feel it. I feel that, ga yeah, that gasket, it feels like it's stripping, but it's not, right? This, this plug was never properly tightened. Now this goes by feel, there we go, I think it's going to go. It goes by feel, and it does take a bit of, you know, doing, you do a few of them, you'll get used to that feel, but if you don't really compress that gasket, you won't get a good seal, and it won't lock the plug in. You don't want to bear down on it, it's the standard 3 8 right, Make, you know, get yourself a nice cheap little tool set, like I said. Um, take a peek in there, right, it looks pretty good in there, sometimes what I'll do, especially for machines that are going to be in weather, I'll put a little bit of chain wax in there. I like chain wax for everything, you know. Uh, a lot of people say you could put a dielectric, like a silicone. Yeah, you could put that. I have some of that. All right, this ready. I'm going to put some gas in it, and then we're going to do a quick test. Um, we also got to put a nice new air filter. Now this, again, there's different types, two different types. Some of them are push button, and a lot of those have a foam filter that you can wash out with soapy water or 
it's really dirty, maybe a little bit of gasoline, kerosene, diesel, or you can just replace it, right? If the tank vent is closed and when you clean out your gas tank, make sure this little vent, right, if you have to poke through it, yours has this, poke through it, because if it's not vented, it, what will happen is you'll start the engine, it'll run fine for a little while, maybe about five minutes, it'll start to pop, pull a vacuum on the tank and then it stalls for fuel and the engine will shut off. So make note of that, get your cap clean, kind of like that the cap is invented because this is where most of the dirt infiltration will be, up around there. Um, they have a nice high filler neck because another issue that can happen with the low filler necks that are close to the top of the tank. You always get a bit of moisture from gas building up around this area. You get a lot of dirt and debris, it so it sticks to the tank, and somehow or other we always seem to knock it into the tank. If you don't get the junk into the tank, okay, you won't have to get it out. Uh, another tip, the small tanks, I always pour through a simple paint filter, okay? Uh, that way, again, there might be something in your filler tank, uh, whatever you're filling with. Um, very common problem. Dirt gets in, water gets in, people leave these gas cans laying around and water gets in there and junk gets in there and then they wonder why the machine doesn't run. Let's give it a test. It's automatic choke, so it should just be able to pull it and it should run. Let's do a quick restart. Now, yeah, it kicked and sputtered a little bit because we had everything apart, and you know, you gotta kind of expect that. Let's just give it a quick restart. So far, so good. I got a couple of things to do to it. I just want to put a little lube on those tires. I'll show you where I like to put it and uh, we'll be back in a minute. All right, just kick it up in the air and I've seen it many times where there is a, a steel bushing in here and then of course there's the steel of the shaft and they get stuck on these big time. This is plastic over here in the adjuster so you don't really have to do anything. And you can put some on the cable. There's a little spot, the cable here. We'll just put a little bit on the cable. I'm not going to show you that, but, you know, put a little on the cable. Do the back tires, too, and the little adjustment area. Okay. And that's it. See you guys in a minute. Now oh, you see, you guys? See, it's clearing up. Now I can close it. And then later I'll suck it out and we'll dispose of the water that's in the bottom. But you saw how much, so you saw how much water vapor. People ask me, you know, how does that happen? Well, especially here on the island, right? We live near the water and it gets humid and it rains like yesterday and the water vapor is coming up off the ground and out of the trees and or sometimes I see fog literally roll in, you know, from the Bay Area over there. And, uh, well, these fuels, is, alcohol has an affinity for water. That's why you can mix it in your drinks, right? So it's going to pull that in. Th these tanks are vented, so you can easily get it in from outside. That atmosphere is exchanging with whatever's in your tank. I, one guy could not understand that concept. Whatever air is in there, it's not sealed in place. It's, it's vented, either through the cap or, in this case, that little vent up front. And that venting, that air is going to exchange. And he's thinking, well, how could that be? And I said, because it's 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year. For the five months, four or five, whatever, six months, whatever it is, where, depending on where you are here, especially in this humid, humid environment, with the snow and everything else, that just keeps coming in and, and it just fills up that tank. It's every second of every day. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching Orchard's Garage. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all that stuff. I hate saying it because it's annoying, but uh, let's build the channel together. I'll see you in the next one.